Okay, so I'm going to show you how to like actually wire this up in person, but I just wanted to explain something to you. So now we're going to wire up our entire circuit for our whole project. Um, so you should have one of these uh, like big white boards with a bunch of like pins in it. That's called a breadboard. It's really useful for uh, like prototyping circuits quickly. And basically the advantage of that is so that um, if you plug anything into these top rows with like the red and blue bars that say plus and minus anything like horizontally so like anything from like here to here uh let me increase the thickness so anything within this same row like let's say you put power in that row anything else that you put in, put into that row will see receive the same amount of power it's basically putting it in parallel and then uh the same thing is true for this row so and then also the down here and down here. So everything horizontally in those rows are going to be like the same, right? Whatever you're plugging in. So they give you little, they display everything. So the plus is where I plug in my positive 5 volts from the Arduino. So it's coming from 5 volt power from the Arduino. And then the minus is where I plug in ground from the uh, ground port on the Arduino. So everything that's in the negative will receive negative five volts. Everything that's in the positive will receive the positive five volts. And then we're not going to use it for this project, but you guys should also know that. Um, so aside from those two vertical paths, everything else on the breadboard, um, it's like the opposite. So let's say I wanted to plug two things in uh, everywhere else in the breadboard. Uh, everything vertically in the columns would be basically receiving the same signal uh, if you wanted to like connect things together. So in the in the upper portion and bottom portion, everything horizontally is the same. And then like in the middle portion here and here, everything vertically will receive the same signal. So let's just go over. Um, just stay with me and I'll, I'll show you how to do it in person also. But uh, let's just go over like how you would wire this up. So for the Arduino, uh, you have like a little blue wire that you can plug into your computer and it plugs into like the USB slot on the Arduino, this like silver metal brick. And that's how you uh, like program it. But you could also use it to power it directly from your computer. If you want your project to be um, like mobile and take it around places, you also get a nine volt battery. You get a nine volt battery, which is this guy. And then you also get this cable that can plug into the battery. And then is the other end is a power jack. So the power jack would go to this little blue portion that I have outlined in this circuit diagram. And I'll share the circuit diagram below for you guys to download if you want. So those are the two ways to power the Arduino. And then from there, um, we're taking power. So we're powering the Arduino with some sort of battery, whether it be through the USB or the power jack. And then we're taking power from the Arduino and powering our breadboard. So we're taking the five volts. We're running a red wire from the five volts line to the plus horizontal row on the breadboard and then a black wire from ground on the Arduino to the negative horizontal rail on our breadboard. So from there, um, electronics is pretty simple, especially for these projects. I know it can like seem complicated, but it's, it's not really. So every component that you're going to use needs positive power, negative power. And then depending on what you're using, there's some type of signal. So let's start with the servo, right? That's this, this guy. So the black wire is indicating it's, you need negative power or negative uh, voltage. So that's going to the ground rail. Then the red wire, you need positive voltage. That's going to the positive rail. And then for the servo, you only need one signal wire. So that one signal wire, this green wire is running to uh, pin five on the Arduino. And then the ultrasonic sensor, um, once again, VCC is uh, positive power, ground, negative power. And then for the ultrasonic sensor, you have two, two pins to connect to. So the, the trig wire is the purple or the like light blue cyan one that's running to pin seven. And then the echo wire is the purple one that's running to pin six. And then for our stepper motor, you plug the stepper motor. There's like this little built-in cable they have for you right into the board. And then the board gets powered from these two uh, pins right here. So you run uh, ground to here and then uh, plus 5V to the positive voltage rail. 
And then you need four wires for this one. So there's uh, in one, two, three, and four. And then I um, and then I have written for you guys. So in one is pin eight. Uh, in two is pin ten. In three is pin nine, and in four is pin eleven on the Arduino. And you could trace it back. And I'm also going to show you how to do this in person. But I just want to give you brief introduction to circuit diagrams and how to wire everything up. All right, first things first. So your kit comes with uh, 10 female to male wires, and I think this will work out perfectly. So if you're just using the kit and you don't have any extra jumper wires, you'll be good. Um, so we're using four, six, we're using six of the 10 for the, uh, the stepper board to the Arduino, and then we're gonna use the other four for the ultrasonic sensor to the Arduino. And then the, for the servo motor, we can use male to male. So I think we're fine. But uh, we're gonna start off by, um, we're gonna start off exactly how we did for setting up the stepper motor example. Um, so we're gonna take our, um, our little JST cable from the, uh, the, set, the stepper motor in our Dragon, and we're gonna plug them in. And then instead of running power directly to the Arduino. We're going to unplug these guys and we're going to get our we're going to get our uh, breadboard out. So we're going to run the black to the negative rail and we're going to run the positive to the positive rail. Actually, these guys shouldn't be here. We'll move them up a bit. Just like that. All right, and then we need to run, we need to run a jumper wire for power from the ground on the Arduino. And that'll run to the negative rail on the breadboard. And then a red wire from five volts on the Arduino to positive rail on the breadboard. All right, so this is the complete setup for the stepper motor, pretty simple. Uh, it's all the same uh, setup that we had for the previous example, and the only difference is instead of running power directly to the Arduino, we're running power to the breadboard that the Arduino is powering because we also need to power the ultrasonic sensor and the servo motor. So let's do that now. All right, so for the ultrasonic sensor, let's start by plugging that into the Arduino. So for me, uh, I made blue echo. So echo is going to be six. So we're going to plug echo into six on the Arduino, on the Arduino, six. So this is running to the echo pin on our ultrasonic sensor. And then trig is going to run to seven. Seven. There we go. And then we run the black and red wires to the, the power rails on the breadboard. So now we run the black and red wires to the breadboard to power the ultrasonic sensor. I'm gonna do it up here. All right, so we, we plugged in our power to the ultrasonic sensor. And the last thing left to do is to take three male-to-male -male wires and plug them into the servo motor. And then we're gonna run power to the servo motor. So let's see, I made purple. This is way easier if you have extra wires and you can pick whatever colors you want. But, and then my blue is red. And I'll, I'll include a, uh, a wiring diagram on the screen so it's easier to see what's going on. 
And then we plug the servo motor signal into port five on the Arduino. Okay, now we're good, let's start programming. I'm gonna start by doing a save as on the stepper motor code because that's kind of the most complicated one, even though it's not too bad. Um, and then we'll like pull in other functions from there. So I'm just gonna do file, save as, Oops. file, save as. And I'll name it uh, assembly code rev1. Okay, so what else do we need? So far, what we have is we can turn the stepper motor up, we could turn the stepper motor down. So let me open up my code for my ultrasonic sensor. And also the basic code for the servo motor. I'll just put these next to each other. So let's start with the ultrasonic sensor. So I like to, I like to separate my code. So I'll do uh, backslash backslash. It just like comments everything out and then I'll just do stepper and then I'll just do a bunch of like hyphens or dashes. So it's really easy for me to see. And then I'll make a new section, just copy and paste it and call this ultrasonic sensor just to keep everything organized for me. Um, so I'm just copying and pasting this in here. So this is from the ultrasonic sensor code. And we said that our trigger pin is seven and that our echo pin is six. And then what else do we have to add? Uh, serial dot begin, put this in the setup. And then, so all that this is doing is, so it's saying wait 50 seconds communicate some text to the serial monitor, ping, the ping, do the actual math and send out a signal and get it back and tell me the distance. That's what sonar.pingcm, open close parenthesis does, and then report it and then add centimeters at the end. So now what we have to do is just bring this code, copy and paste right into our assembly file. So this is gonna wait 50 seconds, and then communicate to the serial monitor our uh, our ultrasonic sensor distance, and then add CM at the end. Cool. All right. So now let's before we add in the servo motor code, let's let's work on this a little bit and see what's going on here. So so one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my ultrasonic sensor portion in the beginning, and just create a new variable called distance int distance and then semicolon right so now we just created a new integer value called distance and the way that the code starts is every 50 seconds right it's going to run through this every 50 seconds it's going to try and ping out and see and see what's in in front of the ultrasonic sensor so now we're going to we're going to store that in the variable distance so we're going to write distance equals and then this function sonar.ping.cm uh, uh, underscore cm so not only is this going to communicate to the serial monitor but it's also going to store whatever this value is the distance it gets it's back in the variable distance okay so now let's write an if statement so if distance so when i was working with my ultrasonic sensor you can after working through the ultrasonic sensor example with the new ping library you're going to want to notice what's what's a far away distance and what's a close distance so like a medium distance away for me was like in between 60 and 30. so in this instance when they're in a medium distance away 
I'm going to make that when the wings flap. So if distance is greater than or equal to 30 and double end symbol and distance is less than or equal to 60 and then open bracket and then it'll automatically make a close bracket. Then what happens then? Flap the wings, which is what we have here, right? So we're going to take the code for the stepper motor and flap the wings. It's going to go in one direction, 500, and then the other direction, 500. For me, 500 was a little bit too much. So I'm going to make this 300. Now let's add in the code for the uh, servo motor. So I'm going to reference this one from the example. So I'm going to create a new portion here. Press enter twice. Copy and paste that. And I'll just call this servo motor. Uh, so what do we need that goes above the void setup? We need this, this, which is including the servo library and then calling my servo. We don't need position, so you don't have to copy that. I'll show you guys why in a second. And then in the setup, we need to communicate to the Arduino which pin our servo motor is attached to. So copy and paste that. And that goes in our void setup. But our but our servo motor is at five. Right? We plugged in our servo motor to pin five. So now I taught you guys about for loops, but really all we want to do, we don't want to like slowly sweep. We want to go to one position and open the mouth and then go to another position and close the mouth. So all we need is my servo dot right. And I'm going to paste that below here. And we don't need the variable POS. We just need a, uh, a t like we need to tell it a value in degrees. So from zero to 180 degrees, where should it snap to? So for me, you're going to have to play with the value. But for me, 75 degrees was the up position. So that's the up position. And then a nice down position was for the jaw was if it came down 15 degrees to 90 degrees. So I'm going to do my servo dot right 90 degrees. So this is in the down position. This may be a little different for you in terms of the angles that you set up. If you want to match me, you could take the servo head and the jaw off of the, the servo and then uh, write us get rid of all this extra stuff and write a script that just commands the servo to 75 degrees and then put the servo head on and then put the jaw on. So you know that the jaw is at 75 in the up up direction and then you'll match me and you'll you'll be 75 in the up direction and 90 in the uh, down direction you don't have to match me but you might have to play with these values to see what's a good up position and what's a good down position for your, for your particular particular case so what we're going to do here is so we have one condition where like if spike sees someone or something approaching from a medium distance then the wings are going to flap now when they're at a close distance I want the jaw to pop open and close. So for me, when I was looking at the serial monitor for the ultrasonic sensor, I was noticing that like, like if I put my hand directly over the ultrasonic sensor, it was like, I don't know, in the teens, like between 20 and 10 or something like that. That was a close value, right? And then um, we, we don't want to tell the Arduino to do anything at zero because sometimes... If the ultrasonic sensor like misfires or doesn't see something, it'll return zero. So we don't want to play with the range between there. Let's do like between 20 and eight. So we need to write another if statement, but I want to write an if statement that's connected to this one. So I could write another, I could write just like another if statement and do like distance, whatever. I could do this where if distance, is greater than or equal to uh, eight and distance is greater or less than or equal to 20, then do whatever. But 
what would happen would be is the Arduino would say, okay, is this true? So this could be true. And if it's true, then it'll do this. But then it'll look at this. And if this is also true, then it'll run both. I don't want that. I only want one to run. So the way to make them connected is to make this else if. So this is like another condition. So it's going to check this one first. If it's not met, then it'll check this one. And if this is true, then this one will run. So they're like connected. Um, and then you could also do else, which is just like literally everything else. But I want to like supply it with specific conditions and have it also be connected to this other statement. So it's going to be else if. So what do we do? So if 75 is, I'm going to cut and paste this here. So what would be cool is like, if you saw someone close, it goes like up, down, up, down, and it like chatters the jaw a little bit. So I'm going to do right to, um, maybe these should be flipped. So if my 75 position is up, you know what? I'm going to throw the, I'm going to also throw this line in the void setup. So no matter what it was running before, as soon as the Arduino starts up, it'll command it to go to um, like an upwards draw position, right? Like no matter where it left off to like correct it from last time. Um, so if it's already starting in an up position, then it has to go down and then up. So after it goes to the down position, it's always good to do a, a brief delay. So I'll do delay of 100 milliseconds. And then it'll go back up and then it's going to delay another 100 milliseconds. And then I'm just going to copy these four lines and then paste it again. And that should be the code, all the code we need for Spike. And once again, uh, if you wanted to, you could, um, if you're getting like different ultrasonic sensor distances than me, you can open the serial monitor and check what's like a medium distance and what's like a, a close distance as you like pull your hand further and closer to the sensor. All right, so we're going to upload this to the Arduino, and then uh, hopefully it works. Nice, it works.